Welcome to the Verity View Pod, an Austin FC podcast brought to you by KVU, the ABC station in Austin, Texas. I'm Paul Livingood, senior digital sports producer here at KVU. Joining me is some, just some chick, Brittany Flowers. And uh, we got Jake over here who is um, new, newly weekend anchor coming up here pretty soon. Um, it, I would, dare I say MLS pundit now? Um, I don't know. Eh, you know, we're getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, soccer extraordinaire. He, he has said that, you know, he might be better than Brittany in the past podcast. That's a lie. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> just trying to start unnecessary drama. Yeah. Yeah, Jake, here we go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> and joining us later will be Austin FC midfielder, Diego Fagundes. We will ask him about one of the same questions we asked Adrian in the last podcast, uh, Adrian Healy, that is the Austin, uh, voice of Austin FC. Um, Brittany asked him, why is soccer so great? It's the greatest sport and the greatest thing on planet Earth. Why is that? Um, so for his answer, you can go watch the last episode and we will ask Diego that and many more questions coming up a little later. So, uh, but just to say hi, how are y'all doing? What's, what's going on today? Doing great. Feeling good. Went to the Verde store. Spent a lot of money. Tell you that much. Yeah, I, I did too. Uh, I did too. Jake. I've also been to the Verde store. Uh, I went with a camera, so that prevented me from, uh, you know, actually feeling the urge to buy something. But there's there's a lot of cool stuff there for sure. There definitely is a lot of cool stuff. If you haven't been to the Verde store, you can go check it out at Q2 Stadium. Um, to recap this last game, Austin FC got their second win of the season. They won four. What four? Geez. They won one to zero against um, Minnesota United. And the only goal scored is by the person joining us later, Diego Fagundes. Um, our MLS released their rankings yesterday, um, and they were ranked ninth now in uh, in the league after being, I think, 15th the week before and then in the 20s the week before that. So clearly this team is on the up and up. Um, let's get to the match. What did, like, Brittany, you watched it. What was your takeaway? Once again, I think that we do a really great job, especially for being a new squad. I think um, I'm pretty sure Adrian mentioned the word mature during the broadcast, and Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. Like we could have come out there panicked, but we weren't. We were cool, calm, collected, great passing. Obviously, we finished. Um, I was I was so impressed. Like it was once again, just so exciting. I think they're getting better and better every single week, even though we only scored one goal. I still, that I, I think we had plenty of opportunities. I think they're going to come very soon. More goals. Jake, what do you think? I think the defense has been uh, one of the most pleasant surprises so far this season. I mean, they pitched their first shutout this past week against Minnesota United uh, first shutout, like I said, of the season. Um, I think the center back play of Matt Beasler and Johan Romagna was uh, just incredibly effective. And as we've touched on in the past, we felt going into the season that that might be an area of weakness that they had invested so much in the attack and in uh, their midfield game that, you know, they were going to have to score more goals than they let up because we figured that they'd be letting up a decent amount of goals. But I mean, the defense looked, pretty dang good um this past week uh much uh much agreed i i, I think um there was a uh, a moment where i can't remember if it was in colorado or if it was in minnesota but there was uh, a ball that was played through the middle and johan did a perfect job of boxing the guy out and just letting the ball run and that, like that was one of many um different examples of just him using his savvy because that wasn't his guy either he had to come over to cover um for the, cover the free runner. And so that's just a heads up play on his part. And then using his size to just uh, dominate the offensive player. And it's just that the defensive prowess is showing. So uh, moving forward, we're uh, the next game is on Sunday against uh, Sporting KC who are one, one, and one. They have won. They won their first game against the uh, New York Red Bulls and then tied their second game against Orlando and then just recently lost their last game against Real Salt Lake uh, three to one. Um, What are you guys looking forward to with, with like 
this next game and what are your headlines going into it? Jake, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think one of the fascinating things for me at the start of every match is just seeing what starting lineup Josh Wolf rolls out. Uh, because it's been a different one for all three games so far this season. And, and some of that was because of injury. Some of that was because uh, welcoming a baby into the world in, in Matt Beasler's case. Um, and then the, the Pochettino administrative stuff with the league. With that being said, I do think that, that he's a guy that – Josh Wolf is a guy that is – that wants to make sure that his depth is constantly ready for game action. And part of the way to do that is to – throw them into the fire immediately. He said before that he's not going to roll out the same starting lineup uh, every single week for all 34 games. And uh, he's, he's stuck to his word so far. So I'm constantly intrigued just to see like what's going through his mind, how he thinks what, or what the best balance is going to be between how do we match up against the opponent and also who's playing really well right now. Um, Again, we said this last week, it didn't happen, but, one of these games, I wouldn't be surprised to see John Gallagher uh, start for Danny Hosen uh, up top. Um, we saw Diego Fagundes get the start this past week in place of Danny Pereira. Um, so that, that's constantly something that I'm on the lookout for just because I'm interested to see what, what Josh Wolf thinks of his depth. I know I'm so curious the, the Danny Hosen, John Gallagher starting situation because I know – John Gallagher comes out and he like shocks the defense. He's just so quick. He makes so smart runs. Um, Danny Hosen's a great passer though. Like without him making, you know, playing the ball to Jared Stroud and playing that ball across, we don't score that goal. Mm-hmm. So I am yeah. curious. I am curious. I mean, but coming off the bench, it's bench. It's like, Oh my gosh, Holy cow. Who is this guy? Maybe it would be more of an explosion right off of the bat. I don't know. That would be really something that's really interesting. But yeah, I'm looking forward to, I think little by little, every single week, we're figuring out each other more. We're figuring out the runs that our forwards are making and even our defenders are making from the back. So I think every game we're, we're knowing each other a little more. We're passing a little bit better. We're actually connecting, you know, 10 passes together to work it around and keep the ball without forcing it. And I, um, I'm just so impressed. Also, I think Brad Stuver, I think he has earned the starting spot officially. I was so excited um, after after this last weekend. I was excited for him. Like that was, I mean, that was awesome to see. I know that I had guessed four zero, but the most important part of that was the shutout. The, z- that the I zero wanted. part, yeah. The Twitter, zero. <laughs> Twitter was calling him a wizard. I don't know if y'all saw that, um, but so that was funny. Um, yeah, the, be- the best tweet, I think I saw you interact with it, Paul. The best one was, uh, the world is like 75% water and yes. the best of it covered by Brad Stuver. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I saw that. A shout out to uh, the Striker Texas and, and Chris Bills and the, and, and the, uh, that staff because they, they tweeted that. And I saw it and it literally made me laugh out loud. I was like, that is an awesome tweet. Um, but so, but speaking of sporting, Casey, they are also um, t- uh, intertwined in recent news that came out. Um, they were one of the two games that got rescheduled for this season for Austin. See, they rescheduled two games. Um, sport, the other sporting KC away game got moved from July uh, up to, I think it's either June 12th or June 13th. But there was going to be a three-week layoff in the seven-game, now eight-game road trip um, to start the season. And now it's only two weeks. What do you like? What do y'all take away from that? My takeaway for that uh, is that the league recognizes that Austin FC is a growing brand and an intriguing brand and a brand that could very much benefit them with some TV money. Um, because part of the reason why they they shuffled that up was to get um, the game between Austin and Seattle on national TV. And Seattle is obviously a team that sells itself. Mm -hmm. Um, Incredible fans, incredible atmosphere, incredibly successful team. And so I think the the TV higher ups at Fox were like, hey, if we can get that with uh, this this new shiny kid on the block in Austin FC, uh, Mm -hmm. that that could draw some ratings. Uh, So that was my big takeaway. And obviously the the Kansas City game was uh, a result of, I think it was – uh, one of the gold cup games happened mm-hmm. 
in their stadium. So that got shifted around. But again, my big takeaway was that uh, TV people want Austin FC on TV against one of the league's best and most successful brands in Seattle. I cannot wait to see the ratings for that game. I think it's going to be wild. I really, really do. I mean, having eight away games kind of sucks before you get to have your first, but Mm -hmm. they've kind of, they've proven themselves, you know, not at home. And it's what they're used to at this point, you know, they're, they don't know the experience at home, but I think it'll make their first game in Q2 stadium, just that much sweeter. And what would you go ahead? My question is like, what, what's more difficult having eight straight road games or having like a three week stretch in the middle of the season. That's where I was going to go with it too. I was, that's where so, I was going with it too. So now they have the eight road games, but they don't have that huge long layoff between games. Yeah. yeah that, that's guess. what, that's where I was thinking. Cause I mean, I think it, it would make a huge difference just because of how the season has gone. If they were like, say if they were 0 and 3 at this point, I feel like that extra road game would be like, Hey, we got to go on the road again. But like they've won twice, and so they've proven that we can go on the road and win multiple times in a row. Um, and then, like with that in mind, looking forward, that that extra you know twenty one days of not being in a competitive match versus only two weeks, I feel like that actually is going to make a big difference, um, just in terms of you know playing against a team other than yourself. And yeah. so, just that competitive edge, I think that actually. At this point, because of how they played so far, benefits them. Whereas if they were like 0 and 3, I feel like this that move or that schedule change would have benefited them because they get an or sorry, would have hurt them because they have an extra game. Agreed. Uh, and so let's move forward to um, Brittany's soccer 101. Um, we're going to have you talk about what is VAR because people are going it, to, it'll happen at some point. It hasn't affected Austin FC. Yet, um, but I was watching a game. I can't remember who it was. Who I was watching, um, but they had a, a a ball hit off the crossbar, go down, hit on the line, and then bounce out. And they, you know, went into the whole VAR situation. So, Brittany, explain to the people what VAR is. Okay, so VAR stands for Video Assistant Referee, and it's basically it, it's a video of what is happening i think that most of the opinion is people do not like var because they think that it is ruining the game of soccer so jake this week i mean the last week you said you wanted to get rid of the offside rule this week if you say you want to get rid of var i will agree with you it does i mean what really sucks is like the offside calls that people use from for var because you know typically it's the ref i mean but if it's if the VAR catches it and somebody's like this far offside, where typically the ref's eye would be like, oh, they looked onside to me. Like it can, it can kind of mess with the game a little bit. One thing that makes soccer so special is the fact that it just keeps going and just keeps moving. And it's not like there's timeouts and, you know, oh, wait, hold on. We have to stop so we can make our play like uh, other sports. So this kind of can slow the game down a little bit and can kind of, I'm not a fan of it personally. Jake, what about you? You love it? You want to say you love it because you always disagree? <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play devil's advocate for the, oh. the sake of uh, playing devil's advocate. Um, I don't know if I like it or not. I think like it's tough because there is so much writing, especially on World Cup games when we first saw it introduced, that like if you're a fan of a team that gets burned by a bad call, are you gonna sit here and tell me that? you don't want the call to be right because that's like what the intent is with VAR. I know it's not perfect replay in, in any sport isn't perfect. Uh, but just, I mean, I'm curious to see what you think of that. I mean, but refs, I mean, they, they make bad calls sometimes. And I would rather, I think I would rather have that than, than VAR. Like they're, they're small mistakes. In the same vein, Jake, would you, do you, do you think that, instant replay belongs in baseball it does belong in baseball uh because i would rather see well here's the thing actually it belongs in baseball because we don't have robot umpires i'd rather just have robot umpires so then the call is always right 
uh, and you don't have to worry about stopping the game for replay. Is that a thing we're working on? Robot umpires? Robot oh, yeah. umpires. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Great. They, robots are going to take over the world, taking over people's jobs. Come the, on, robots. The, the first thing that I popped in my brain was Will Smith is going to pop out, and then you know, like, all these from iRobot. Brittany, you didn't seem like you got the reference. <laughs> I've heard of Will Smith. Okay, oh, I have a question. The, yes. the, the, game, the game is about the athletes. It's not about the umpires. It's not about the refs. I don't, like, we're like, oh, like, we have such a nostalgic view of, like, the human element of the game. Like, there's still a human element going on. It's this incredible mm-hmm. athleticism that we're seeing from the players. And I don't want it overshadowed by a bad ref or a bad umpire. That's all. Okay. Um, so I have a question and we can cut this out if we don't want to talk about it, but what do you think of this? You all like sports. I play soccer with a girl who, if she kicks the ball out, she will say, no, I kicked it out. If the ref's like, so let's say we're playing defense, they mm-hmm. have a corner. She accidentally like heads it past our line. They call for a goal kick. She is the type of person to say, no, I kicked it out. It's a corner. And then I'm over here like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> no, you did it. And then she's like, yes, no, I did. I've got to be honest. What's your opinion on that? <laughs> oh, man. Jay, go ahead. I think that, uh, that when you're playing a sport at such a high level, uh, it is so easy to let your emotions control every decision you make. So I'm not about to sit here and ask MLS soccer players to find it in the kindness of their heart to do something like that. Also, when you told that story, I'm getting major vibes of a commercial. That commercial. Everyone (laughs) makes fun of it. Everyone makes fun of it. It's one of the worst commercials out there because it's the corniest and cheesiest thing and so detached from reality. I guess everyone's reality minus the the person who plays soccer with Brittany. But yeah. I'm uh, telling you. uh, Yeah, I'm telling you. I could be by myself, kick the ball completely out and go, that's our ball. It's ours. (laughs) Thank you very much. But no, there are people who are that honest. No, I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'm with Brittany. I'm the same boat. Like I, I, don't say you like if I was that person team I'd be like, what? What are you doing? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think it's because any of us are bad people. Or maybe this is no. just the excuse I'm making. It's just because <laughs> when you play sports, like the endorphins start kicking in and like it clouds your judgment. And like you're not gonna be the most honest, kind-hearted person. You are no. playing to win the game. Yeah, yeah but there Very you much. go. Someone else who's playing to win the game is the person that's going to join us next on the Verity View pod, and that is uh, Austin FC midfielder Diego Fagundes. And joining us on the Verity View pod, it is Austin FC midfielder Diego Fagundes. Thanks for joining us, man. Hey, thank you for having me. So oh. the uh, <laughs> there you go, clap it up. Um, so to start it off, uh, you're obviously going to be remembered uh, in the history books as the first player to ever score for, for the franchise. Can you just take us through what that means to you and what, how it felt to be Austin FC's first score? It's amazing. Um, I've said it from the first day. Um, as soon as I got here to Austin, I felt welcomed by the fans, by the, by the organization, by the team. Um, so it was nice to be here. Um, this is the club that I actually wanted to come uh, once I decided that I was leaving New England. Um, and like I said to everybody, the first game I've ever played professionally, I said to myself, I need to put my name out there so people are in, know me. Um, that didn't change when I joined here. I wanted the people to remember who I am and that my legacy can keep going. And I thought I did a good job by going in there and I got the chance to score the first goal. Not, not that it was all planned or anything. I guess I was just very lucky to be in that opportunity, but um, I'll take that uh, with me and hopefully my name could uh, be remembered. Awesome. Diego, Diego, your story to get here is is pretty cool. Uh, signed to the MLS at 15, you made your debut at 16 years old, uh, and then you spent a decade or so playing in New England. Can you take us through where you were at in your life and, and in your career when you decided that, you know what, it's it's now time for a change. It's now time to, to come to a brand new franchise and what specifically you were looking for when you came to Austin? 
Well, when I, when I first decided that I wanted to leave, um, things weren't going the right way for me. Um, I was playing the wrong position. I wasn't the same Diego that I was years before that. Um, and that's when I knew I needed to change. I needed a new environment. Um, I needed a new uh, place to be. Um, I wanted to show people that I still have a lot in my system. Um, I'm not stopping now and I won't, and I won't stop. I'm, I'm trying to play my heart out, my, my, do everything I can to help out a team win. And if I can do that, that's what I want. Um, when I decided, I remember I was at the lake and I told my dad, I think this is the time to move. It's, it's time to make a new change. And um, he asked me, where do I want to go? And I said, to be honest, Austin's a brand new team and I would like to go there. Um, three days later, I got a phone call from them and, and now I'm here and it's, I'm as happy as I can be. I think everybody sees it on the field and um, I'm playing the best soccer that, uh, that I've been playing for a while. And um, that's what I like to see. And hopefully I can keep uh, showing this team and the, and the fans and the organization that um, there's still a lot in my tank. It's almost think, like you willed it into existence. Yeah. Well, that's, that, it's, it's tough because before people, I would see it on social media, uh, Diego's not performing, Diego's doing this, Diego's not doing this. Uh, what people didn't understand, I wasn't playing the position that I normally play. I was playing more of a, of a defensive midfielder. And that's not who I am. I can't express the player that I that I am or that I want to be uh, by playing the wrong wrong position. And I and now that Josh is allowing me to play my position and uh, allows me to bring my character and who I am, I think people are starting to notice that there, there's still a lot in my system. Um, don't get me wrong; it's still early to say a lot. Um, I'm just my confidence is very high right now, so I just have to take that with me and every day perform as much as I can, help out my team win games and. Uh, do everything I can for this club. I think in my opinion, why uh, the reason why you're such a good fit for this team is you're both a, a, a 10 year MLS veteran. So you've been around the league, but what you're also only still 26 years old or so. Uh, so you bring kind of that, that youthful energy, um, but also a great balance between the two things. Can, can you describe what aspect of your game fits best with Josh Wolf's system? The aspect that I think fits them the best is when he called me, he basically said, look, we want you to play in the, any, any of the top four positions. And right away, my, my, I smiled because that's what I wanted to do. Um, that's my game. I know that's where I can help the team the most. Um, and when he first said, look, this is what we like. We like when you come into pockets, when you turn, and when you go at players one-on-one. Those are my main two, three things that I'm actually really good at. Um, and when you take those three things, I'm not going to be performing to my best ability. I'm going to be struggling a little bit. So um, right, right away when Josh and Claudio were talking to me and showing me what this or, this team was going to be like and uh, what they wanted, it was just an easy decision for me to say, hey, I want to go to Austin. And at the end of the day, I made the right choice. I'm very happy where I am. Um, I love the city, the weather, the team, the, the fans are amazing. It's, it's just an, a whole package that Maybe that's what I was missing before that um, that I'm get that I wasn't getting, and now it's I'm getting all that. Go ahead, Brittany. Okay, so obviously you've scored two goals in a couple of games. Um, do you have a game day ritual that you're like I have to do this the same way every time? To be honest, it's not like a ritual, but uh, I do drink my mate before the game. It's my one thing that I like to do, um, and and then we have our they come and bring us some type of electrolytes and this and that. And I tell them my magic is just my mate. I just want to drink mate and that's it. Um, and I guess that's the only thing I do. I prepare it before we leave and then I'm drinking it from there all the way till before warmups. Well, I couldn't think of a better advertisement for it than your performance as the last couple of games. Okay. So one of my goals in my entire life and also with this podcast is explaining to people why soccer is the greatest thing in existence. So in your own words, will you explain why soccer is so wonderful and why people should love it as much as uh, we do? I don't know. I think it's different. I think people are more passionate about it. Um, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard to make plays up. It's not a game that it's just stop goes and there's a lot of whistles and you can make plays. You can say timeouts. Um, it's very different. It's just on the go. You have to perform. You have to adjust to positioning. Um, I think we have crazier fans than anybody. Um, and I'm just talking about all, the whole world. You, you see, um, just soccer is just crazy. 
um, soccer, football, whatever people want to call it, because at the end of the day, it's the same sport, but there's three different names. Um, I was so passionate about it because my dad played professional. So it, it kind of drew my attention and I wanted to be exactly like him. I wanted to be a professional soccer player. I knew it was going to take a lot. Um, did I know that I was going to be one? No, but at the end of the day, I knew I had to work hard. I had to do everything I could to, to be where I am. And I'm very grateful. I, I, I still work hard every day. I give my heart and soul to whatever team I'm playing for. And when I'm on the field, the, the one, the most important thing is make sure you play with a smile. That's awesome. Uh, so you've mentioned a couple of times about um, the influence and, and the advice you've gotten from your dad on, um, you know, on your new situation. Obviously, you've come to an expansion team. And you said you wanted to kind of start a new. Um, can you talk about like just the the unique sh- like struggles? And I guess if there's a, a blessing in the skies about being on an expansion team, because you're all kind of learning about each other on the fly. You just met each other. You're starting to play together. And then, um, like, how do you work with uh, your teammates who, like, might speak different languages? And how do you all communicate and work through all that? I think that's one thing that was special about this team. Um, It's not a team that we came back with 11 players or 12 players and only brought seven or eight back that are brand new. This team's a whole brand new team from the the team to the organization to the new stadium to the new drinks. We have everything brand new. The one thing that caught my eye was that when it was optional training – We had 20 something guys showing up every day to make sure that we wanted to be a better team. That's, that's hard to get on other teams. Maybe I've never seen that before. You would only see maybe 10 guys, 11 guys, but when you have a whole team training six weeks before preseason, that's going to be an advantage. And I think you Mm -hmm. see it. I think we're, we're getting connections. We're trying to, we're trying to become a better team. Um, And I think the most important thing, we work for each other. There's not one player on this team that you can say is not working on the field or is not playing to the best ability. We all want, we all expect the the most out of it. And then you have players like Alex Ring and Matt Beesler who have the experience and they're like captains and they want the best from you. Um, Alex is one of the one player that I always say, he's the one, he'll work so hard, but he's expecting the same thing out of you. You make a mistake. He'll be there to cover, but when he makes a mistake, he wants someone else to be covering for him. And I think that's a huge, I think the last game in Minnesota, I think he was a key player for us. Um, He was stopping everybody. He was stopping counterattacks. He was uh, trying to start plays and, and and it's awesome to see. I love playing next to Alex because I know I have someone behind me that can uh, help me. Uh, Go ahead, Brittany. Okay. So I tweeted that um, I would bleach my hair blonde immediately if I could um, have your soccer skills. Uh, what made you dye your hair blonde? And do you think that if I bleach my hair blonde, I can have, um, your soccer skills? Uh, to be honest, to be honest, look, I, I have a unique character. Um, I want to be myself. I don't care what other people think about me. I've been doing this since I joined the league when I was 15. I didn't, I did my hair pink. Who thought of, who thought I was going to dye my hair pink? No. And I scored with my pink hair when I was 16 and that was who I was. Before that, I used to do some crazy stuff in my hair. I had long hair, I had short hair. I'd do ponytails. I'd do spiky hair. I'd do mohawks. I didn't care what people think. It's my, my, my own style. And if I want to dye my hair, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you just deal with it because I'm the one who is performing with it. I'm the one people have to look at. Um, and that's, that's what I, I tell people. Um, I like to see that young, young kids want the same hairstyle as me sometimes. That's pretty <laughs> unique because not everybody – wants to have blonde hair or pink hair or green hair or purple hair, but I've done so many colors in my career and will it help you be better? You never know until you try. (laughs) Maybe you need to do it. (laughs) I think maybe I do. So I just want to get you on the record here. Um, It's my understanding that you not only weren't old enough to sign without a parent, uh, an MLS contract, but you also didn't have your driver's license yet. Uh, and so you had to have someone else drive you uh, to essentially sign your first contract and then to the trainings that followed after that. Yeah, that, that, I think that was the toughest part. And, and I think that's where um, the, the commitment that my parents took um, that I always appreciate because not every parent is supportive towards their kids to follow their dreams or that. And I think that's the most important part is their parents. I always tell kids, You can, anybody can get their dreams come true, but there's a lot of responsibilities, a lot of commitment. There's a lot of things that have to go before that. 
Um, my parents from day one, they took me to every training session. They took me to every tournament. They took me to every game, no matter how far it was. Um, and when I signed pro, my parents' signature was on my first contract. My, my first training sessions, I had to have my parents drive me. My parents would literally sit in the car and take naps in the car while I'm training. That's, that's the commitment that they took. And maybe this is why I've been so good in my career where I, I appreciate a lot of the stuff that they do. And I'm still thankful to this day. Uh, me and my parents are really close and um, they, they come visit whenever they can. And this is the first time that we've been away from each other for, for this long. I'll say this really quick before we get to Brittany's rapid fire questions. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to one, be so young starting your professional career to do it with your parents dropping you off at training and three to, to also do it with pink hair. Like you're hopping out of the car, 15, 16 years old, uh, <laughs> as your parents drive up and, and there's a guy with pink hair as well. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just confidence. You just have to go out there. I, I don't, I don't look at who I'm playing against. I just have to go there and I make sure I'm, I want to be better than who, uh, who I'm going against. If I, if I have to beat them one-on-one, I'm going to try, I'm going to try my best. If I have to score a goal, I'm going to do that. I, I just, I don't care who's on the other side. I just play my own style, make sure I'm smiling. And when I have my chance to perform at my best ability, I'm going to do that. Like I said, I give my heart and soul every time I step on the field, no matter how hard the game is or, or how bad of a game I'm playing. I, I just have to go there, work hard. Cause there's other people behind you that are, they're doing the same thing that want it. Real quickly, before we get to Brittany's rapid fire questions, I have to ask you how many times in your life have you heard people call you DA goal? Like, cause that was something we said last in the last podcast. And I'm assuming that's one of those things where you're like, you hear like, okay, yeah, I've heard that my whole life. I've heard it a million times. So the, and it's not like I heard it my whole life, but uh, a lot of people used to call me Dieguito um, basically because I was small. And, but like, I, I know Brittany, I saw the tweet that you did <laughs> and that I know exactly how that feels because people used to tell me that I was small. When I signed my first professional contract, there was one guy that was with a national team and he's the one, one person that said, you're not messy. You're small. And I said, I don't care how small you are. As long as I can play soccer is all about brain. You have to be smart. You have to be fast. And that's, that's pretty much it. If yeah. you can be taller than me, but all I have to do is be smarter than you. And I don't care how tall you are, how small you are. I do not care. I don't know. How, I don't care how old you are. I always play with people um, older than me. And for me, I, I just have the confidence that I'm better than you. And I don't care what it takes. I'm going to show it. And I'm going to prove it. And that's what I tell people. I always tell these kids, I don't care. It doesn't matter how old they are, how tall they are, how short you are. You just have to go at them and just think that you're better than them. I'm ready to run through a brick wall. Let's go. We're going into rapid fire. Let's go. I know you're getting me really pumped up here, Diego. I'm, I'm like ready, ready to go. Jacked. I'm ready. Hey, <laughs> I, I got to say, look, I got, I got a tattoo. And it says dream, believe, achieve. And those are my three words that I go with. I, Cause that's our, everybody's, whatever you want to dream of, you have to dream about it first, but you also have to believe it before you achieve it. And those are my three main words that I always tell kids. And I, and I, you see it in every tweet, you see it in every Instagram that I post, because that's what I go by. Well, dang in 40 years, when you retire from soccer, you can be a motivational speaker. Yeah. So if you're, if you I'm needed another job, speaker. I get, I get shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way. No Listen, way. That, that, that's I not swear. a chance. Dream, believe, right. achieve, and you can do it. Okay, Diego, <laughs> I'm going to do uh, some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? No. <laughs> but we're doing okay. it anyway. We're doing it Are anyway. you ready? Are you ready now? <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Toilet paper, do you put it over or under? I don't know, so I'm going to say over. <laughs> That's Good the answer. correct answer. Okay, who is the best singer on the team? I don't think I've heard anyone sing. But okay, I, well, Kakuda said that he could sing, so you better make him do it for you. I've never heard him sing. Kakuda's quieter than, than it is in this room right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's, who's the funniest person on the team? Uh, probably Rodney. Okay. Uh, what is your go-to dance move if you're thrown into a dance circle? I don't dance, but I'll, I'll go, I'll go salsa. Oh, I would normally ask you, let's see a little bit of it, but I don't think we can see your feet. So we won't even know. All, all you have to, all you have to do is search my first professional goal. Cause uh, second, second professional goal against uh, Seattle. And then I show a little bit. I like it. Um, okay. Uh, what is your karaoke song? 
I've never done karaoke because I'm scared because I'm shy. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> you seem shy. Um, dream, believe, you, achieve. Yeah, dream, believe, <laughs> achieve, and you can do karaoke. Do you have a song that you love belting out? I guess your favorite song to sing. Um, I like the it's uh, an Argentinian song, and it's the one that says the go the uh, Diego Maradona song. I thought you were gonna sing it for a second. Oh. Are you gonna sing it? Uh, Mm. No, I guess, or I can say Dora the Explorer, go, dear, go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, um, in and out or Whataburger? I've never had Whataburger, so I'm going to have to go in and out. Oh, so you just won so many brownie points with Jake. Oh, you got to get you some Whataburger. Okay, I mean, I'm so sure I was, that you don't. I, I was going to go today, you know? Yeah, uh, see, yeah, yeah. you yeah. had planned on it right after this still, podcast. There's still time, so I might go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, my last question is, in your best Matthew McConaughey impression, will you please say, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was really I, good. I love it. Um, <laughs> before we uh, uh, get you out of here, one last question. Um, I just want to get it from your perspective. We've heard it from uh, different people from Adrian and I, on Twitter. Can you just run through the whole Los Verdes foot golf story just from beginning to end for us? So when I, when I first actually got here, um, Kako, who's the one that is in the Los Verdes uh, group, he actually messaged me and said, hey, anytime you want to go play foot golf, let me know. And me, as being a people person, I said, yes, I, I want to do something new. I want to meet new people. And I said, yes, let's go ahead. And I said, hey, by the way, I'm with my best friend and my dad. He goes, oh, that's fine. Let's go. We go out there. To be honest, it was, it was so much fun. Um, and of course I won, I had to show them who the real boss was in, at their home pitch. Um, and I won, I think I hit like 10 under or eight under or something like that. Um, and I remember at the end of the night, they, on the 18th hole, we we're all just hanging out and stuff and they wanted a picture. So we took a picture They we threw the LV sign and I said to them, I was like, you know what, when I scored my goal, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to throw the LV sign. And they're like, all right, all right. Well, three months later, I was able to do that. And now it's like a tradition, I think. I, I can't stop yeah. it. That's so how, awesome. How did you remember that three months? Like, how do you like, because I mean, I'm sure you're all like on an emotional high and you're like, but the, you still had the, the recall to be like, oh yeah, I, I said I was going to do this. It's, it's, I, I, to be honest, I don't know what my mind was thinking, but I think when you see the the fans out there, the support, I think it just clicked in and said, hey, you, you, you said something and you, you have to, you have to stick to your word. And that's what I did. Um, and like I said, I, I'm a people kind of person. If you invite me to do something, I'm never going to say no. I want, I want something new. I want new uh, memories, new experiences, and, and I'll go and do them. Okay. I challenge you to foot golf. Anytime. I would like to challenge you. Okay. I, I, I'm going to put it on record. I played with them a couple of days ago and I hit, um, I think it was 18 under. And I know, uh, what is it? Josh Jackson. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he had the best record and I, 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 I was going to tweet at him and tell him, Hey, someone beat you, but I didn't want to be that person. It's pretty crazy that, that you're still finding time to interact with fans as much like in the middle of the season. But to be honest, it's, it's who I am. I, I, I want to get to meet new people. This is a new town for me. This is a new city. Uh, for me, if I don't do that, if I don't go out of my way on my days off to just enjoy it, I'm never going to meet new people. And to be honest, I became really close with Kako. Um, we went to dinner and stuff like that's I don't think of him as just a fan or anything. I think more as a friend. And I think that's how mm -hmm. he sees me as a um, we're texting each other. We have a group chat now with my friends and a couple of the guys. And it's it's all fun and games now. That's awesome. Yeah. I think everybody's going to think you're their friend after this interview. Know, you are man. just an extremely likable person. Oh, I appreciate well, it. I will destroy in foot golf soon enough. There you go. <laughs> All right, there, I'll take that challenge. Invite me whenever. Okay. Is there, any, is there anything else you want to ask them before we let them go? We got about three I, minutes. I am going to ask, are you going to wear cleats or you want me to wear a uh, Converse like I did? Ooh. Oh, did you wear a Converse? That makes it even more impressive. I, I mean, yeah, that's that what I was going to say. I was going to wear cleats, but... I, I was, I was thinking that we should go, you know, alpha be alpha cleats versus cleats. But I mean, that's just me. Now, I'll stick to my converse then. Oh, I think okay. I'm going to as as someone who uh, is trying to appease both sides here. I think Diego <laughs> needs to wear his converse 
to kind of even the playing field. That works I know for me. Brit- Brittany's an unbelievable <laughs> soccer player, but she's not a professional soccer player. So nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm doing what I can. Come on, I've seen some of those posts. You can kick a ball. I've seen those. I mean, I can kick a ball, but we'll just see how accurate it is. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. All right. We'll set it well, up. I'll take that challenge. I'll, I'll wait for that invite. Awesome. Okay. All right, man. We really appreciate you joining us. Uh, you were you were awesome. Uh, thanks for joining the Very Review Pod. Have a good one. Hey, thank you. We love Diego Fagundes. Thank we thank him for joining us. He was freaking awesome. Um, you know, so we are very much so going to look forward to that uh, that little challenge that you posed to a professional soccer player. Uh, do you want to comment on on your your confidence to co- to challenge him? Yeah, you know, um, I've never in my life played foot golf. Um, I just oh. was. He was just really confident. So I just was like, maybe if I'm really confident, things will work out for me. Like they, like they've worked out for him, you know, dream, dream believe, believe, achieve. achieve. <laughs> so that will be my motto going into going into this foot golf uh, extravaganza. That should be I, not embarrassing whatsoever for me. I wish you the best of luck. I, I, I'm super excited for that content. So, um, Thank you. place your bets now, put your money on me. What's the, me. <laughs> what's the odds in the, in the books? Oh my goodness. Uh, um, well, I'm the underdog. If you guys are wondering. Okay. I, so. I believe in you. You, 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 you're not just not, you're not just some soccer scrub you play. Like granted, you're not a professional soccer player, but nope. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to hype you up. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> So this week, this weekend, Austin FC is going to take on Sporting KC. Um, it's the fourth ranked team in the West. That would be our team, um, Austin FC, against uh, Sporting KC, who is 10th. And, uh, yeah, that kind of wraps everything up. You can catch all of the Austin FC content from KVU at kvu.com slash Austin FC, or you can just, you know, watch us every week on the Verity View pod, and we'll keep you updated. Um, anything you guys want to say to people as we sign out here? I want to say dream, believe, achieve. Love it. And I want to say I'm looking forward to Matt Beasler's homecoming against Kansas City, second game in which he will have the dad bod strength at his side. <laughs> uh, it worked out in the first game. I think uh, the homecoming adds an even more special element. So looking forward to seeing him uh, at center back. All right, that's it for the third episode of the third episode. I cannot talk today of the Verde View Pod. So we can't, can we get it done? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Austin FC. I just, so so like my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my brand on this podcast. Like I'm I can't be a fan of the team. I can't. I like. I'm trying. Mm-hmm. I'm trying that's to fair. cover them like from a neutral third party observer angle and like. If, if you, if I know Brittany's a huge fan, like she, she has, she hasn't made that a secret. Like, it's cool. We all have our different things. So, uh, Paul is too. Um, yeah, that, that's just where I'm at. So they went Jake, Jake, you're coming off like one of those people that would say the ball went out on me. The ball went out on me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, I, you I are. said I wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you you seem like one of those people right now. <laughs> those two things are not related at all. <laughs> sure, oh Jake. Oh, my goodness. That, that's it for the third episode. Y'all catch us every Friday. <laughs> See y'all later.